Hello and welcome to this video. Just in time for Halloween when we're going to create the perfect the Dracula or vampire, whatever you can call. And we're going to utilize Adobe Sensei AI partially to create the perfect portraits of this. So here's what we have at our original image. We start working with this. And here is after editing. You'll notice on the face how it's changed. So we'll just add apply all some of these elements. And of course, we're going to over our standard portrait kind of retouching. Let's go ahead and start working on that. Okay, so creating our character, we're going to first inside the Adobe Bridge, selecting image we wanted. And right here, I already kind of went through the photo shoot and I found this is very nice expressions uh, for our Dracula. So we're going to use this image. We double time op click to open this inside the camera. Okay, here's inside camera. One thing I will let you know. I'm working with Adobe RGB color space and I'm working with 16 bit channel colors. You can always modify this by clicking on a gear if you need it. And inside gear, go to workflow and select here or just simply on the bottom with this Adobe RGB, just clip in your case, it maybe says as RGB or whatever you have it and select. My color space is just matching the camera set on mine and I'm shooting with Canon R5 which is in Adobe RGB color space and same space I'm working inside the Photoshop. I will recommend for you to keep it same color space, depend what you prefer to work with. Okay, so right here we set our color space. Let's go now zoom a little bit out and see our image. Here is our model. One thing what I'm looking first, it is shadows and highlights. And look right here, for example, in the eye, we can see a little bit over exposure but it's okay because we shot on a raw format which i highly recommend for you to shoot if you look on if you for some reason shooting on gp uh, jpeg be sure to switch to rights provide more information and recover in post-production if you need it like for example we take a high highlights and reduce don't worry that we lose some of the dimension and skins we restore this soon okay we'll take highlights we maybe even pop up just a little bit on exposure Let's go down below to our details. In the details, I want pop-up sharpening anyway between 60 and 70. This is related to my camera because Canon R5 have it inside anti aliasing filter, and I'm just compensating for this to restoring some sharpness in this. Depending on the camera you're using, some of the Nikon don't have this filter, but most of the Canons do have it. Okay, so let's go next. We're going with a color mixer in luminosity tab because we reduce some luminosity in some elements, but we also flatten a little bit skin and one restored depth of dimension based on luminosity. So we'll go in orange color, which represents skin and we'll just increase. Notice how it will increase any have these definitions. By the way, because we're working with 2D images, our definition or a depth of the image will represent by luminosity by shadows and highlights. So that's what we do. We just change this and it's applied. Okay, let's go down below. In optics, I want to use it, use remove chromatic abbreviation. That will reduce some of the coloring shifting on the end of the lenses. Doesn't matter how good is your lens, you will have this problem. And this is allowed the software compensate for this or fixing as well as use it image profile correction. So example, we have it, like I said before, depending on what lens you're using, you will have a distortion on the end and this will help just properly position. Okay, this is all what we need to do. Next, we're going ahead and open this inside the Adobe Photoshop. So inside the Photoshop, let's look at our image and I see we have it some background, nice fun elements. We have it our portrait. First, I want to change something on position because I think not enough space on top of the head and knees maybe a little bit come closer. For this, we're going to use it um, cropping tool. Let's select this. And before we moving, I want to be sure it says content aware. Content aware, it's one of the most use it probably AI options inside the Photoshop because it is check for the content and work on this. For example, if we have a diagonal line, it will actually work very well. AI will recognize line, it's added. So in this case, I just want to go ahead add a little bit on top and maybe cut down slightly on the bottom, maybe around here, knees like this. Now let's go about there, okay? And normal just line under his chin. So it will give it a little bit more room on top of this head. Um, let's go enable delete cropped pixels because I don't need it. Many case I leave them on. You never know, you maybe come back to something, but in this case, I know I won't come back to the area. So I enable delete cropped 
pixels and how I said be sure you have it content aware is enabled it's allowed us to fill this area with properly elements when you're done press enter and it will take few uh, seconds to complete the request you can see how the top look perfect and if we look even closer you can see how the lines even on the backdrop extend properly with properly ang angles again this is not just stretching it is utilizing photoshop sensei ai to create this stuff okay next what we're going to do it's retouching and usually i create a new layer Let, let's go call it retouching and in this case i don't think we'll do so much retouching but just be sure we don't have it any other elements we don't want it i want to use spot healing brush which is very easy tool in this case and we're just going over it does have it make up like right here see we, i don't want to say that's things i just go remove teeny tiny like uh, some fur or something elements was there elements that may drag our eyes and we don't want attention on them that's all we do yeah not too much to fix let me check in the eyes again okay eyes look good like right here see we have it something and remove it very nice clean okay i think that is about all background will dim down so i think that's all we want to do the touching so next step will be let's moving and it's moving it is we want to apply a little bit on a skin but not too much because it's dracula with older skin i want to keep it preserve some of this uh greenness to this so we'll go ahead Control shift alt e command option alt e click to create take all visible layers and create brand new by merging them together in the new layer so and we'll have a smoothness on this let's go we'll call it smooth okay and we're going to filter noise dust and scratches and in this case we're going to set this is a different depend how much you want it i'm looking mostly on this edges because we don't want to go like this okay we want to be eye recognizable we don't want to have it too short but it is will be based usually on the size of your image and i think this is accurate because i have it smooth i don't see any teeny tiny details on the skin but i see very nice separations between main parts so we'll go ahead click ok on this we don't want to apply this to everything so we're going to hold down alter option and click on a mask which is creating black mask and hiding everything we created to make them visible we want to have a brush white color and i want to be sure it's a soft round color and our opacity we want to go and set maybe around 10. okay now we can start brushing in on our mask an area where one little bit softener how I said before i don't want to apply too much but does just to soften a little bit in some areas because i don't want to have i want to have this little bit older skin which we also will bring a little bit better after what it does with this soften tool it's help us to remove some of those um dust sparkle kind of like we distracted out of image okay i think that will it's all maybe just a little bit on our hands so it's matching skin overall you always want to do this i think that will work next let's create the hair a little bit more perfect for this same Control shift alt e command option alt e go create new layer and let's go call it hair and with the hair we're going to filter stylize oil painting and oil painting we will have it our set to Stylization 10, cleanness 10, scale 1, brush details will match lighting for about angle. Let's click OK. It does creating, but it is not uh, strong enough. So what next I want to do is go filter, sharpening, and apply unsharp mask on our filter we just created. Maybe around 120 will should work just fine. Okay, let's go ahead, zoom in and check. And you can see very nice hair, but I don't need to apply everywhere else. For this same things, can um can alt or option and click on the mask create black mask we'll go ahead select that white brush as we did before and because story should set to a 10 percent opacity we start brushing in so let's go ahead right there okay brushing in brushing in and you can see it's come up very good so just give it a li little bit more painting effect to the hair elements maybe eyebrows as well creating somewhat surrealistic look without touching any skin 
Okay, so next what I want to do it is apply a little bit on a uh, work a little bit with the colorization of skin. And this is not necessarily can go on a specific um, pattern, but for me, uh, because it's important to kind of remove maybe a little bit redness, create some effect. We will on the eyes and we will going to work on a skin. This moment, what I'm going to do is create a new um, black and white layer. It's adjustment layer. And right here, I'm just looking on the intensity on the skin. I'll just bring skin just a little bit right there. You see, we emphasize, make a little bit darker. And of course, when we select mask, press Control Command I to inverse, and now it's a black. So with using same brush and be sure our opacity, even probably low, let's go like maybe about five-ish, somewhere around there, we can start painting in some of those um, color reduction. There you go. I'm trying not to use some element uh, just around. And by the way, the model by itself already had some white um, makeup, but I want to reduce even more on the colorization. Just like right there. We could also apply just a little bit on eyes, make them desaturated. And sometimes the desaturated eyes a little bit maybe freak out people. Okay, let's go closer. You know, let's go with a 10% actually opacity. So we're going a little bit faster. And we'll make the saturation here. Okay, apply it. I would do like lift a little bit after eyes. Remove the nose. Don't worry if you redone a little bit too much. We can always can go back and painting back colors where we need it or make other reduction. There you go. Okay, of course, if we're done with this, we must do with the hands. And we'll just go select the hands, make them darker. There you go. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit too dark. It's okay. We can have it our opacity for this layer. And you can see we can just a little bit bring in, you know, maybe around that level. 40, 50. I think this one will work great. So let's go next. Add a little bit details to this for the same Control Shift Alt E Command Option Alt E. Take all visible layers, combine them and brand new as we did before. And we do this global dodge and burn. But realistically, what we have it, it's a detail enhancer. Should we have it detail enhancer? Let's name it to this. And we'll go into image adjustment, black and white. We'll go to bring a little bit red and yellow up. It's a skin tones mostly. Click OK. Now let's go to image adjustment. And we're going to use um, shadow highlights. By the way, even the shadow highlights, you see menu like this. Click on there, show more options. So we have it expanded options. And right here, I want to set my radius to 10, a little bit smaller than 30. Take amount for the shadows up, amount for highlights all the way up, and bring tone down. We're going to use this as a soft light, which is have it 50% invisible, darker, will progressively make a little bit more um, contrast and brighter so on, on different edges. And that's what we're doing. We just add a little bit of the element. Okay, let's click OK. Next, what I want to do. It's actually going in a filter, sharpening, and applying unsharp mask to this element. What it does, it will add even more on the edge detection and more green to this. So let's go ahead, click OK, and we want to switch this to the soft light. So let's get closer to our image and see what's happening. So, so like on a skin, remember we remove all the stuff, we make smooth to be sure some elements not there, but this one, it's add quite a bit texture for us. It's what we're going after. And I'm going with this element and just a little bit reducing, like maybe around 50%. So that should work very good. Before next step, actually, we start using AI uh, for our case. And on this case, I'm going to select Control Shift Alt E, Command Option Alt E, Create New. Let's go call its AI. And we're going to utilize in a filter and going to Neural Filters. So Neural Filters. It's actually will go to online, work with a cloud, and it's utilizing a new, um, relatively new, Sensei uh, AI engine from Adobe. Okay, we're going with a smart portraits in this case. We don't need any skin smoothness, and you can see they have it quite a bit. They even have it super zoom, which is supposed to be work very good on upscale some of your images. 
as well all as additional options they also have it some additional options for the uh, beta and i have a strong feeling we maybe see some discord stable diffusion mm -hmm. soon enough because I think on uh, November 18, they will have it, or this year, they will have it new Adobe Max, where they introduce new technology and new software. And uh, I have a strong feeling they probably will do that. Okay, so let's go right here. We can see on the options, let's just expand them. And we have it happiness, facial hair, eye direction, we can change shape. And what we're looking at is our age. So right here, facial age. And it's kind of a very fun tool because we can make a very old man and let's take a little bit time because remember how I said it's work on the AI so it's sent back and forward going this to AI and we can have it a little bit younger and let's take processing device on device so let's wait a second and you can see it's reduced quite a bit wrinkles it's not necessarily I want it I want more wrinkles so I'm going to bring higher elements so it will take a little bit time again how I said before it's a sand and you can see it's great older older look it's what we wanted um anger i'm not sure if i want anger or passive we can see what it will add usually it will just drop the uh eyebrows up and a link like this no nah, it does not look good so let's go back to what we have originally it was very good expression as well head direction light direction we don't care about this uh, retain unique it's fine and i think this is all what i want i want to actually create a little bit older look in this case which is creating we don't need it we can actually even pop up a little bit more okay and hair thickness let's pop up thickness see how this hairline will work okay too much let's go back to less thickness see if it will give it us older look and i think less thickness actually work very well so we can go back in a little bit more and there you go now we have an older looking face okay let's bring even more edge see if we can edge even more in this way there you go okay a little bit more yeah i think this is good okay this is very easy very nice to easy uh <laughs> very nice and easy to use tool which allowed us to create all these different elements and we can explore them later but for now we're done with this let's go ahead and click ok next things what actually i want to do it is going in our liquify tool okay let's go right here and i will just dip, duplicate ai just in case we want to come back and usually what i perform operations i create new layers and copy those layers so now we go to filter and we go to liquify it's another tool which also power up but it's on local ai stuff and let me go ahead scale this just a little bit so we'll fit in our screen and you can preview what we're going to do in this case we'll use it with a face awareness and let's detect the face i'm going to enable all of this and you can see what we can do here it is increase size of eyes i'm just going just a little bit increase size of eyes a little bit on a width just create a little bit over big and reason is i want to make jaw down a little bit more kind of look um the vampirishy so for this we will compare as usual as person compared to the eyes and that's what we're going to do we don't need it nose high maybe you know let's see if we drop a little bit actually down and make it less wide yes i think that one will work well Okay, we don't care about smile or lips. We could actually reduce the lips, make it more thinner. Okay, that will create a kind of more tense face. And mouth height and just a little bit. Okay, next shape, forehead. This is kind of nice because we can say we want a lower bulb. Nope, we want bigger because vampires usually consider as a smarter or a stuff. So we want a bigger forehead. Chin high, let's see if we can one drop this actually a bit down. And jawline, we want shrink, so we'll have it a little bit more, so like kind of vampirish look. Face width, uh, just a little bit right there. There you go. Okay, let's go ahead. After we're done, we'll click OK. And right now, we'll look on both this image. You see before and after. So we did modify, make a little bit longer, and I think older looking person so it's what we want to do next let's go ahead create new layer and this is will be dodge and burn and uh, dodge and burn layer what we want to do is go edit 
fill. We're going to fill with a 50% gray, 100% opacity, normal. Go ahead, let's click OK and switch this to the soft light blend mode. Soft light blend mode allowed us to create highlights and shadows. And I'm going to use just normal brush, 10%. Again, it's a soft round, what we want to do. And we'll come closer to the face. In this case, we can add actual shadows and highlights to the face to add a little bit more definitions to this. So I'm going to add a little bit under eyes, emphasize on some um, shadowing, okay, like right here. And usually uh, what I do, I work with the shadows. And when I need to add highlights, you'll notice my black and white. If you press X key, it will flip between them. So if I need highlights I'll just flip and I'll just add highlights to element where I want it so this way I can do much faster to add those highlights okay and uh, remember the shapes is a presented by luminosity level and it's what we're going to do I also want to little bit create like blank his eye almost people just all white little bit more freakish kind of looking okay we'll add some highlights in this area Play around, see which one highlights what you like it, where you like to create, how say that it is very personally, how you're creating, but we can emphasize some of this. Okay, let's get closer, okay? So we can emphasize some of these uh, lines right there. Create a little bit more darker look. Again, between black and white, press X key to flip it. It will go create X again white just on the top slightly. Okay, there you go. And we can also just add some little bit wrinkles going. There you go. This is nice. We add if you're overdone, we can always fix, but I want a little bit actually overdone because I want to create the my um, looking. Okay. Let's go to the hands. We'll do same on the hands. We'll add like knuckles, some lighting going. Okay, let's go zoom out. And also we have need to add a little bit more on his clothes. Notice we don't have anything on a book. We'll do this very soon, but I want to darken our pants. They usually, I don't want people to pay attention to this element. So it's the reason why I'm just using shadow and highlights to hide all of that stuff. Okay, so we'll add but you know what? We'll need to replace background, yes. And I think the greatest things what we can do with the replace background, we're going to use it some hour from mid journey background, from AI render background. Okay, and as AI, we have it multiple diff, um, effects. So like this one look good. Uh, I will just check how they will look on the back. This is what important. By the way, if you're interested in some of those backgrounds, I have the collections. If you don't want to create, I have a collection for sale you can purchase. If you want to create, I have it actually in my profile, the text link, so you can just generate by yourself if you want it. But you know what? It's sometimes, honestly, I'm just by myself going to purchase because it's much faster. Okay, I'm not sure which one I like it. I like this one. It's more stable to his face. Or like this one. Hmm, you know what? I think I like other ones better. I know it's more complex, but this will apply. So best way to blend this inside, we need to go switch this to soft light. If we want it, you can see it's applied. You can go try with the screen or just normal. And let's go just normal example and we'll switch after. So I'm going to create normal, alt or option, click on a mask to hide all the way as we've done before. Now we have a brush and I want this one set normal brush about 5%, again, very soft. And we'll just start painting in. Okay, the problem is with the normal, we actually overlaying, well, not overlaying, but we're overpainting this. And sometimes we'll have a problem like around here, maybe here, and you can see it will come up. So it's the reason why I like to use elements like soft, light, or other than which is provide a little bit better blending in my case, I think, you know. So you know what we're doing right here? I just want paint for sure. We apply to this 
areas. Okay, like right here. Okay, a little bit more over here. And depend if you prefer this way, you know, you can just painting this way. However, you think it's work for you. Okay, there you go. And if we switch to different mode like overlay or soft light, it will be visible it's something on a background but not stand out. And I, it's the reason why I like to create this way, but however you can fix how you like it. For me, I will leave just soft light because I want to focus on his face. This is for me that important, you know, all that look. Okay, so I'll notice also here in a book we have absolutely nothing. So let's go put something inside the book. And what are we are going to do? I have some scratches, okay? I don't know what is this. It's same, it's generated with mid journey, which is actually a very nice bonus for us when we do this. I'm just going to put it closer to his book scale, maybe around there, okay, like right here. Okay, next we're going to edit, transform, and we're going to distortion. So we can take these corners and just link the each corner to the about corner of the page, just a little bit bigger than page itself, like right there. Okay. So next we want to have a different blend mode. For this, let's go see what we have it. And you can see soft light just perfectly applied to this. You're gonna have a different chicken scratch, but I mean the soft lights work very, very well. Right here, just some corners we need to work for this. We create new layer, a uh, new mask, sorry. We'll take our brush, we'll switch brush to the black color because now we have it in a white. And with about 10% opacity, we can just start mask out these corners because does not look you know let's go with 40 percent and by the way um easy if you just go on top and you see right here percentage if you press like one ten percent press two twenty percent press like three very fast three three is become 33 percent so i like this shortcut i recommend for you just to go and learn new shortcut every time when you work with a photoshop and soon you will know all of them and it's much easier Look right here, we have a nice scratch done in our book. We can change to different one, but this already not empty pages and it look very good. Okay, so let's see what else we have. We have nice positioning. I think I wanna apply a little bit more shadowing like on the back. We'll create new layer, switch this layer to multiply mode. And this layer we're going to call shadow, deep shadow. Okay, we're going to select, make our brush, Hold down Alt or Option and click to select the color. So we select color around there. Increase brush. Again, we'll go with 10% opacity. And I'm just brushing a little bit over this area. So I want hide. I want darker, like around him right there. See, we add darker. Next, we can create new layer. Hold, fill up with a 50% gray. Same what we did before. Dodge and burn layer for us. And then this one will switch to soft light. What we done before it's become invisible and now we can go back to our black and white like for example if we take white 10 percent we actually can create like light rays going over so we can do this way you know just add and you see the background come up and again we'll switch to the black light and we can black colors and just add some blackness in some other areas as we need it usually i add lights around faces so we can kind of bring up a little bit better portrait so it's again faced on him there you go we have it, our portrait done let's go next what i want it's work a little bit on eyes make them a little bit more creepy i think okay so let's go ahead and we'll do layer we're going with creating curves so we'll create new adjustment layer curves we'll switch this to overlay and on here we're going to add like this arch and this is arch you can see it's add quite a bit to his eyes stuff we don't want to do everywhere so of course we'll select mask and press ctrl command i to flip it and now we'll use it brushes and we can come closer to him okay white color on the brush 10 percent just in the eyes and we're going to paint these in the eyes make them glow so right here you can see how it's bring all of that stuff very nicely okay let's go zoom out there you go now we have glowing eyes if you remember the best part about this, we have it our opacity. We don't need to redo. We can just go and see how much we want to eyes coming up. Maybe around there. 
Okay, let's zoom out. There you go. Look, ice come up very well. We could make also ice replacement if we want to just add lines. I'm going to like a bath ice. And I have some eye um, generated package. I'll probably put a link down below for those who are interested. Different eyes you can put it in replacement, but I'll just leave it like this for now. I think this has come up very good. Okay, so let's go next, work on our coloring. Before coloring, because we did all these modifications, different things, they have a different grain. We want to make nice same grain through all of them. I'm going to create new layer. We'll go call this grain. Okay, and we're going to fill up with the 50% oops, 50% gray right here and we're going to now filter noise add noise and we'll add about 5% noise I found this work probably about the best switch to soft light now we have a very uniform grain kind of a noise going through everything so it will help us to blend together okay next it is add some color correction to this we're almost done, so if you're falling asleep or get bored, just stay alone for about another five minutes and we'll be done with this. Okay, next, let's go ahead and creating the selective color adjustment layer. In selective color, we'll go to down, select the blacks, and I don't necessarily like the crushed black, so I'm going to just bring like 1%, 1 percent, 1 minus 1. We'll go with a darker blue or a little bit on a green and cyan. So it's you can see it's make a little bit darker. And I usually what I do, I make a darker color, colder color, like bluish themes. And we'll do mid-tones warmer, like a yellowish and a red. And this will create a little bit nicer adjustment. But in his case, you know, actually blue, cyan should look a little bit better. So maybe we'll keep it this way. Kind of make a more unhealthy color. Okay, let's go now to the whites. And a white, uh, yeah, let's do very unhealthy so he's unhealthy dude you know this it's what we're doing this okay and we can have it highlights pop up yeah let's pop up a little bit better on highlights i love selector colors because you can adjust so much with them and again this is before and after selective colors you can see it does add a little bit more theme more story to this so let's go next and we're going to create more and one more curve we call this color okay and in this case we'll go color select to the color blending mode right here and we'll go select blue channel go up this is very basic basic scenic curve i created that's what they call to adjust create kind of image and it's not necessarily going to go use it but it's optional for color adjustment maybe too much in the blue you know that too much let's go about like only 10 percent uh one last last step what we want to do is go ahead type there and we're going on this and says image let's worship and find art photography there you go it's all what we needed here let's go to reduce size make it smaller and i'll just put it in a corner and take my opacity down so it'd still be there very teeny tiny because I don't want people actually like, oh, look, it's his name. No, it's name just right there for those who are interested. Hey, who did this work? I want them done for me. There you go. They can find. But overall, here's our image. Let's go just to go select all of them, group it. We'll call it city touching. And we'll have it before and after. Little bit change, I think, going to the better, more interesting char character. The one thing I may specify on this corners, pull them out, make them more even kind of freaky. But I think for the just face retouching, in about 30 minutes, it's not bad. So thank you for watching this video. If you found this useful, interesting, and just give it like, subscribe to the channel, click this notification button. It does help me a lot actually to promote this video share this video i'll let other people find and hopefully you have a fun fun time creating if you are patreon supporters just let you know many many assets you can download it for free by become the patreon and i'm trying to release every monthly new stuff so you always have it updates on new interesting things going on there and again thank you for your support